Dutch says go on, which is the signal that means it's time to go live. Welcome everyone to the Arcadia round table. Ah, I can hear myself. Um, phew, that was a close one. This is episode nine-ish of the Arcadia round table. It's been an Easter break. There's not been millions and millions of, of news articles, but we're going to find some cool things to talk about. Most of all, we're going to talk about games. But before we do that, Chris, it's been a week. How you been? Very well, thank you, sir. Um... Got a big contract over the line, so that's reduced me uh, stress levels, which is which is good. And um, uh, pretty much, I think I've played all I can on Skull of Bones. I'm just on the end game, doing a bit of a grind until the um, next kind of season starts. So over to Dragon's Dogma, uh, about an hour and a half in, and feeling feeling like it's going to grab me like Skull and Bones did. Excellent. It's, it's, we're going to talk a bit more about that, but um, it definitely will. Wandering Dutch has betrayed you, Dodge. What uh, what football are you watching right now, and how you been? Uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch don't really know because he's at the other end of the spectrum. Like he's like got something to look forward to of his football club. We're just West Ham, so I don't. Uh, I don't really watch West Ham, but West Ham are playing the old rival tonight. West Tottenham Ham Spurs, isn't it? I don't want nothing to do. If I, if I've got it up here on the other monitor and I, I'm watching the game. You'll you'll know I'm watching football because I'll be jumping about and well I won't be jumping about celebrating I'll just be like I've got no air to pull out so it's yeah but West Ham Spurs that is a very cleanly shaven head is that is that today's effort that's a fresh yeah it's today's effort the boys I think the boys used to prefer cutting my hair so they're trying to convince me to grow it back but they ain't got to walk around with have it, you told them you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should know. They were the ones doing it before, but I think they just, uh, they're probably thinking, hang on, this geezer might go and buy himself a set of clippers and stop giving us money to do it. So, yeah, but uh, no, keeping it for now. Might get that cloud, that cloud oh, week that we spoke about last. Like. Yeah, That's skull crusher, yeah. Just... I said, I might start getting, I get like that cloud week because now I'm a big Final Fantasy guy. So I might wear that next week. On the plus side, though, like some people, when they do lose the hair, uh, if they've been wearing a headset like yours for so long, they end up with a dent on their skull. Were you like a little bit relieved when you realise you haven't got, haven't got a headset dip? Uh, I ain't got. <laughs> I've got a pretty solid suede on me. Got the I will tell you what, the amount of scaffold bolts this head's nutted. I uh, surprised it ain't <laughs> like a bit of rock in. cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a bit of rock cake all smashed up. Like it's just quite a good I've got a good head on me, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's enough. Beautiful. We're gonna be is there gonna Beautiful. be a weekly feature of the show? Like talking yeah, about yeah. my head and my, my hair loss. Head. Talking it's about late. my dome the dome. Like you that, right? it. I mean it looks like there's enough shadow and follicles to grow hair back there, so I know. Just need the money now to go turkey. <laughs> <laughs> just need that turkey back. money. <laughs> uh, uh, but you haven't got it because you've been buying so many games. What games have you been playing, Dodge? Um, well, uh, Dragon's Dogma Two, obviously. Um, played a lot of that. Um, I feel like there's something else. I might be, I might be because I was doing Elden Ring on the Steam Deck. Um, at the back end of last week. Um, and then the other game. For some fucking unbeknown reason, I, it's Final Fantasy fourteen now that I yeah. managed to install last night, but not actually boot it. I, I, this is the thing with me, Asa. Like Final Fantasy was never on my radar at all, and then it just popped up in conversation, and I was like, "I'll go on in." And then the next thing, I was oh, installing oh, like ninety, yeah, it's like, it fourteen pound, but like I, I'm installing ninety eight gigabytes oh, so of well. something. I know, I'm weak minded, as you know. But I, um, yeah, so I installed 98 gigabytes of data onto my NVMe, and I'll probably put about an hour into it, and that'd be it. 
But that's right, it. So right, that, that's all I've been playing. That's all you've been playing. But like I say news is like we need to dig a little bit deeper on these games that you've been playing because that's my favourite part. Anyway, I always like talking about games more than I like talking about the sales and bullshit like that. So tell me, Dragon's Dogma, like how many hours roughly are you into it now? Roughly, I've got it here for you, mate. I'm 55 hours in, which for me is, is obviously I know we've had a four day Easter break, and, and usually I work the weekends and stuff like that. I'm not really working weekends now, but for me to put that amount of time in, in was it, was it been over a week, right? It came out Friday 22nd, did it come out? I think so. It's like two weeks, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah, considerable for me, but I, I'm loving it. Do you know what I mean? I, um, we're sharing stuff in the Discord all the time, as you know, like, you know, people sharing stuff. And then obviously when you look into Twitter, you know, other means, um, this just this living world is just like, say you see the clip that I think I shared the other day from Twitter, like a griffin, someone fired an arrow at a griffin and it nosedived into the water and just got taken and they got all the XP. It's, um, I think it's great, you know, and, and Cap, Capcom came out today with their sales figures for the game. The game's doing really well for them. Uh, it's nice to see. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, you know, like Capcom are bang on a purple patch right now. Like everything they're touching is going really well. Obviously, this Path of the Goddess one's got to come and, and we'll see what happens with that. But um, everything that they've touched for the last few years has been fucking really good. I know people might say X or Primal, but I never touched that. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see a lesser known IP. Obviously, it had its cult fan base from the original, but it's nice to see the the mass like it's keeping pace sort of with the Resident Evils and the Devil May Cries and the more higher higher tier Capcom games. So yeah, just good to see a game do well, you know. So, and would you say so? Like, um, Dragon's Dogma Two had a lot of talk about it being Game of the Year and all the rest of it, and when it came out. Everyone loved it, and I think this is where Chris is with it at the moment, but we'll get there in a second. Everybody loved it. 55 hours in, is it still that good, or are the flaws starting to like get on your I nerves? I, nah, I think it's, it, the beauty of open world games that I'm discovering now, because I'm not like someone who's played loads and loads of them, like but open world RPG-ish type games like this, um, I think it's all about keeping like keeping you interested right and and what dragon's dogma is doing for me without going into spoilers is every time you sort of going through your quests there's a new it's quite a big map and there's a new part to go and find and you can just venture off in this game like you know what i mean you can you can just go in at the start and just go for a wander and just start discovering the map you know so i mean there's a there's guys in our discord that have got like I mean, FTW is ridiculous and Satama, like they're, <laughs> they're double at times of me. Like they, they've absolutely smashed into it and they're still enjoying sessions in the game. Like even if they've finished the game, they're enjoying being in that world. You know, you could just walk around one corner and all of a sudden there's like a Crimea there or something and you've got to fight it. And yeah, it's good. Like I say, it'll be interesting, like with a game of the year conversation and all that, um, I think it'd be in there. Like still defo. Um, obviously it had its performance issues. Um, but that you know, people are still not really complaining about that because it's just sort of isolated in that one area. Um, but uh, you know, hell divers, I don't know if it's game of the year material, but hell divers, I mean they've they've just hit a big patch on that and it you know, raised the level cap on that. So that looks like that game's gonna be sustained for a period of time this year. So yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see games do well, you know. It's um, you mentioned the Discord there where people are streaming it. It's chronic that gets me because Discord, when someone's streaming on and you chronic, on yeah. there, and you just like mouse over it, it, tells you how long they've been playing. And regularly, I just have a little mouse over, and I say, "Chronic's been playing Dragon's Dogma Two for the last thirteen hours or something like literally <laughs> that kind of stretch." And then the envy takes me, and I have to close it. <laughs> I want to play that for thirteen hours. <laughs> F- F- FTW is just put in the chat there. He's got 119.2 hours in the game that's been out two weeks. He has smashed the life out of that. Still you know? loving it though. Uh, so. It's good. It's good. That's that's only got to be encouraging for you, right, Chris? Because you're right at the start of it. How are you finding it so far? All right. So far from fucking Dodge's Aslan, not uh, protecting Gregory. 
it seems <laughs> like it's broken and shit. So, That's your know. massive error. Yeah, you took I'm Dodge's hoping... pawn instead of mine. You deserve everything you get. I mean, Dodge's pawn just <laughs> approached me with his little British accent and just went, Diamond Land, like, take me, I'll look after you. It's like level 30. As land. As land, boss. <laughs> I, I created John Wick as me uh, pawn, and then, but he's got like the most carnage, like medieval British accent, which just ruins the whole thing for mm -hmm. me. So. Ought to be twixt, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for getting it's used to it. Like, I, there's I... a ladder over here. He sounds like fucking <laughs> Toast. Toast of London. Half the time. They have their ladders. <laughs> they do. Oh, they I have had, a um... life, but... I had sworn to myself that I'm going to try and talk like them, but I've already forgotten the lingo from not playing it for like a week. So, um, yeah. but yeah, tell me more, Chris. Tell me more. Life, just say well met, well met. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's not enough. I say that, that in, anyway. in the supermarket. <laughs> well <laughs> met. I, I want to introduce the Orton betwixt all over the place. Ort everywhere, <laughs> and I don't, I don't even know what that really means. Like, I see the placement in sentences. I want to adopt it. Tell me more though, because you're you're what an hour and a half in. What class did you pick? A fighter. Sorry, my brother's just amused me saying it's Clem Van Dyne going the chat. <laughs> Toast of London. <laughs> Toast of him. <laughs> Ray Purchase. Yeah, it's the fact that he's like, uh, it's Clem Van Dyne going, and then he lets go of the button. What I want you to do is, <laughs> and he's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> it's looking. Um, yeah, so I'm about an hour and a bit in. Um, definitely love the environment and just kind of wander around. And I've stood on quite a few kind of uh, hills and cliff faces and just looked around the world because it just looks amazing. Yeah. It just goes goes on forever. Um, I've got four pawns. Well, sorry, I've got three pawns running around with me. I don't know if that... I just got approached by loads of pawns at the start. It didn't cost me anything. Mm -hmm. I just went, yeah, go ahead. Hire yeah. them. So I presume they're all... Well, one's his dodge, as I presume. I mean, one could be yours. One, I presume they're all part of the Discord. Uh, ah, you know if you're a Chadley, <laughs> is amazing. You get um, Capcom's default ones tend to approach you at the start. So you'll have some yeah, of them. So I had this big 7-4 fella approach me, and it's just a Capcom level one. I just told them to do one. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, so it's uh, yeah, so they're all right at the minute. Um, as I said, I'm just going to the first big kind of city where, I mean, I'm literally right at the start, so it's not spoiling anything for anyone in the chat or whatever, but it's just obviously they go, you do risen, come to the city, and let's find out. But So Gregory was on about like a like an ox cart and then just got fucking his ass handed to him by cyclops and now he's just floating in the water i picked him up and latched him out and then it, it come up with a tutorial thing saying use like a something wearing stone or something to revive him mm -hmm. i haven't fucking got one so but his little yeah. minions like his little knights that were running around with him they just stood there now like won't even interact with me, they just stood there, like, we don't know what to do. Some level designer at Capcom's gone, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot to make him up invulnerable. <laughs> so he's died now, and the, the game's come to an end, so I don't know, I'm just going to crack on to town, ignore the off and see what happens. Like, a good yeah. tip, Chris, is, like, what, is to save, always, like, hit um, an in, yeah? When you hit an in, save there, rest there, like, and it will create yeah, a save, save file in the previous place. But this is like a big long walk to the next fucking town. Yeah, I know. Like that, the that... North Gate, and then that Cyclops, and then Gregory was all acting dead hard with his fucking cool shield and his cloak. Just ran in on the Cyclops. He just head butted him. He just fucking <laughs> went into the river and just died <laughs> there. And then we had to finish the Cyclops off. And it's just like, oh yeah, Gregory's dead now, so he's not going to be able nice. to let us in the town. I'll have to. I'll have to put it on after this episode and see what, see if I can just crack on to town without him. But I mean, it came up with a tutorial, as I say, saying use a wearing stone to revive him. But I was like, I ain't got one of them. And I've spoke to me pawns to see if they can do it. And they're just like, nah. nah. And I so stabbed better than me. in the cart by accident. So then my pawn healed him. I was like, we don't heal him, heal the main fucking protagonist who's taken us to town. So yeah. 
Well, yeah, that's brilliant. I'm, I am loving it. I'm loving this weird, that, queer like, Gregory just getting his ass handed to him. Might be why your game is different to mine, because you at least know where his corpse is. So your game is telling you you should probably try and revive him. For me, it's like he's in the ether. He's gone, like evaporated. I don't know what I did with him. I reckon he well probably went dead. off that waterfall in your game. It's just... <laughs> It's just at the bottom somewhere. It's good though. Normally, it would be because um, I threw him, but <laughs> it's good. It, I was going to say it's good. Even me, I, I had a a point in the game where I had to go and talk to a prisoner, and I've got like a jail key uh, on me. So I started dialogue with a guy, and uh, I just like you know just milked the dialogue until it went repetitive, and and there was no update to the quest, but I could see that I could open the jail door. Yeah, so I was like, am I going to open this gate or what? Like, and then in the end, I thought, well, there's nothing else to do. So I've used the key, and as quick as I did it, all the guards there just turned on me like, and just switched, smashed the life out of me. And like I say, <clears throat> when I'd restart the game on the auto save, it would have me in the cell with the guy. Yeah, <laughs> so I had to then go back to an in save Okay. Um, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't too bad. But yeah, the game. Uh, the game will fuck you about, no doubt. Well, Ricky, Ricky G was saying earlier, he'll confirming in the chat of his round. He snuck into like this desert world through like this little doorway that he wasn't supposed to get in. So he's supposed <laughs> to be like some lion, the lion uh, you know, race or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And he Beast snuck yeah. in. And then all his pawns got killed, and then he just got his arse handed to him. But he couldn't sneak back out, so he had to load the save and lost about two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. It does, it warns so, you. Yeah. One of the loading screen tips tells you, like, make sure you use the ins because the auto save is going to fuck you over at some point. It's like the actual boss of the yeah. game. Uh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, was, I thought it was being clever, but I ended up getting battered, he said. So, <laughs> right, I mean, I mean, just back on Gregory, I'm not sure whether you know where it kind of goes. Oh, pick up that barrel and chuck it into the rock face and flood, flood the area so you can move the cyclops on. I'm not sure whether like Gregory was fighting the cyclops and when I flooded it, he got washed down stream and then just drown or something. So your yeah. game's quite different to mine because none of this happened in mine, but it's the same in that he's dead, um, which is the important <laughs> the important detail, I think. At least I need to get out spectacularly in mine. <laughs> With a damn he might have done in mine, just no one was watching. So, or was it spectacular yeah. if no one was watching? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, I've been playing some games. I've been playing, I've not played enough Dragon's Dogma 2 because I'm still pretty much at the start, despite it being. I, I loved every moment of it that I played. And then I got jealous and envious of, of Chronic's 13 hours and, went, and I threw it out the window. I didn't know, that's not actually that true. Was it yeah, he's at 80 and um, FTW is at 120 and I'm at like 4 or 5. Um, but I will get to it. I've been trying to get Final Fantasy VII Rebirth out of the way so that I can like, reclaim some of my life, have that time back. I'm still not anywhere near the end of that game. It is big and a lot of it is nonsense. It's good when it's good. I thought you hated the Ubisoft map style. I hate... I absolutely do Quite hate the Ubisoft stuff. map style, but I still can't break myself from it. Like any other game, I, I can ignore the Ubisoft map and just not do it, but I have to do everything on this one and I can't. I'm trapped. It's got me. I like, even though I know that a lot of these things I'm doing are not fun, I, I have to do them all. Um, and it's only, that's, this is only the nostalgia that's got, got me with it. Because Ubisoft can stick map icons everywhere and I just stick my fingers up and go, Sony can stick map icons everywhere and I'll be like, no. No, don't be silly. For pretty much any other game, but for some reason, like Final Fantasy VII, I have to do everything to see what's familiar and what isn't, and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm churning through that, and it's bittersweet. And Final Fantasy XIV, like Dodge says, so a few years ago, we went to um, EGX, and it was a terrible time. No offense, people that organize EGX, but this was the. Um, the first one that they had like half open during or just after the COVID pandemic closed everything down. So it was really small scale, poorly attended. And about 70% of the people there were wearing silly cat ears. Like this is, I mentioned EGX because it is the closest experience to Final Fantasy 14 that you can get. 
if you, if you were there. The Cat is a prevalent, it's a strange, strange game, but I'm really, really enjoying it anyway. It's uh, it's an MMORPG, obviously, um, very much in the vein of World of Warcraft, which is, for the longest time I've been saying, MMORPGs are like my favourite genre of games that I don't play anymore, because they take too much time. I, I love them as a genre, they... they straddle this line of of like persistence and new stuff this is there's different ways you can play games you can go back to a familiar game that you've loved forever and just keep on playing it and playing it and playing it but those games like old ones will stay static so it's there and the familiarity gets you and you can do new experiences where you're buying everything that comes out and like consuming new content but an mmorpg normally straddles the line to give both because it's familiar and you've had it forever but it's constantly delivering new content and I love it as a genre for that, but it's a scary one that can that can take all your time and stop playing anything else. Um, but I've managed to get, I'm living the dream, I've managed to get my whole family onto Final Fantasy XIV at the moment. So I've been running things with my wife and two kids, which is like why I had them in the first place. So <laughs> finally, <laughs> it's taken this long and we're finally doing it and it's great. One of them hates it, but I'm making them play anyway. Um, so that's what I've been up to. Um, Chris, have you ever done an MMO RPG at all? Um, tried a bit of um, Elder Scrolls Online for a bit, um, mm-hmm. like years back. Um, but no, uh, I haven't. I haven't played one for e- eons. Obviously, played a bit of not quite uh, an MMO, but. Played Red Dead Online, which is kind of and GTA mm-hmm. Online, which kind of obviously is a bit, but like Blair's the line between it's not. Um, but no, El- Elder Scrolls Online was the last one I had to go of. So it's not the easy, the you don't like to deliberately see, uh, avoid the people. genre or anything like that. No, no, I don't deliberately avoid it. If there's some, I mean, the one I'm looking forward to is June, June Awakening or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'll probably end up getting so. Balls deep in an MMO, but it won't be a uh, Darsh's cat as ninja and behind him. Um, oh, wow. I thought something was coming out the back of my head at one point. It was the fucking cat. <laughs> um, she's about to attack something. Got a big shadow um, looming over me. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I'll see. I'll see how many minutes Darsh puts into Final Fantasy uh, fourteen before bring up Darsh's cat on there. Darsh. This is your first one, or have you played something before like it? I had a game called The Day Before. I don't know if you remember that one. That was, <laughs> RPG, <really. laughs> it was everything, that one. It was everything. You one of the 10 I, um, No, nah, I, uh, I don't think I have, mate. I don't. World of Warcraft ain't, ain't, ain't really done that. I can't think of any others. Like you said about Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I've not played any, like I said to you originally, like Final Fantasy VII was the only Final Fantasy game I ever played. Um, but obviously, we've got a little community there now. I see young Gamsley, you know, coming in, getting all loud. He's been banging the drum. And uh, I see a few takers in there, Replicant as well. He's another one who's in there, and a few others. And you know me and my phone, I don't want to get left out, you know? So. I thought I'd install it, but there's a good chance You're I won't. You're doing the right thing. Through. Now you are. We've got yeah. so Gamsey's obviously doing it. Havoc's doing it. Replicants doing it. I'm doing it. Um, and Heaven's Demise is doing it. So we've got a bunch of people in there that are playing it, and it is only it's like 13 quid for all of the expansion packs together at the moment. So it's a good time yeah. to try it. Plus, but, obviously, it's just that it's Xbox release and. But one well, thing. You're telling no, me is to get to level 20 is like one of the biggest pigs going, yeah. And I will bomb that out if that is if it remotely disheartening. I won't, don't matter about the level 20 fucking scampering in the fields and having a quality time. Like, if it's dog getting there, I won't waste my time. Like, you That's know a what I mean? One, so, like the onboarding for, for it is terrible. The the opening couple of hours is awful, but a lot of it is delivering letters, and you love Death Stranding, so it might be right up your street. Oh Fucking no, Paperboy, Final Fantasy oh. Paperboy edition. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't let's not talk about Death Stranding because uh, that's a high bar, very high. Bar. Very high bar. So you might love this. You might be like, oh, the first. The first 20 levels were the best part of this game. Everybody else is like fighting stuff, but I want to deliver them letters. 
Um, no, it is a pretty rough start on the game, but I am kind of into it now, so I'll probably be playing it quite a bit, I think. But it is also making me want to play World of Warcraft as well, because, like I say, it is my favourite genre that I don't touch. So I'm lost forever. See you later, everyone. Um, anyway, um, speaking of MMORPGs, they can be a little bit addictive. Something that's going on this week that you may not have seen, um, it was brought to my attention by Peter Morland, who's a good chap who's got his, um, got his eyes on and knows what's happening. But there's a little lawsuit going on in America at the moment, and it is a small-scale thing that you don't need to have heard of because it's not that interesting in itself but essentially america is the land of suing people and someone is suing uh, a multitude of games publishers because of the addictive qualities of their games destroying this person's son's life and livelihood um the lawsuits i don't think it's particularly unique i think people have tried to take publishers to court for um for dark patterns and addictive like methods and practices in their games for a while but what was interesting in the article was that the lawyers for the likes of Take-Two and Microsoft and whoever else um, have defended the addictive nature of the games or whatever by saying, actually, what you're accusing us of here is making the games too fun and too entertaining and you can't sue us for being too good at what we do. So it just raises, on this week of relatively quiet news, it raises an interesting conversation on the nature of games being addictive, whether it is, whether these publishers are doing anything wrong and whether too much fun is actually is actually a, a valid concern which obviously isn't but um, Chris have you ever been have you been addicted to a game could you just stop playing games tomorrow if it came down to it I mean Dark Souls I stopped playing games for fucking nearly 12 months or whatever when I had a lot of stuff going on in my life or whatever so the answer is probably yes um, let's face it it's just Americans just litigate, don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that person's dad's probably just gone, ah, oh, could do with a bit of money. Oh, the kid <laughs> likes these games, now, <laughs> so I'll I'll try and litigate. Um, I mean, where does it end? I mean, I, I know to be fair, I know more people who'll binge watch a series on Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever. Is that addictive? Yeah, Are they going to get sued for making an addictive series or whatever. Um, I mean, he just needs to control his kid better, doesn't he? Really. That, that, at that's the same like time, though, <laughs> yeah, that's a reasonable defence. But, but at the same time, we know that various publishers, <laughs> yeah, um, various publishers have like hired psychologists to try and understand how to get, like, how to specifically to get people addicted and coming back and all the rest of it. Because as a publisher, when you're trying to monetize, particularly um, free to play games and things like that, it's essential that people keep coming back. Which is why we get nonsense yeah, like it, daily login rewards. The mobile but... gaming space massively mm. bigger than the mobile gaming space because it's little kind of like snippets of <laughs> of like addictive, repetitive gameplay. Um, I think you know, I had a little look at the article. I think like enjoying building in Minecraft. I mean, I, I've got loads of friends whose kids just enjoy the creative mode in Minecraft, and to me. So any of those kids could turn into like architects or something. They're that into like builds mm. and stuff. You know, they could go into construction or anything like that. So I think, I think a mechanic that's enjoyable. Um, why not allow your your kids to be creative and and kind of enjoy that? Um, I think it's different with the kind of predatory, you know, um, you know. Uh, the, the packs that you can buy and stuff or, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's Rocket League or whether it's FIFA or whether it's something else, um, NBA 2K or so any of those type of games, I think, where you just blatantly create a load of, like, play to win, uh, pay to win, sorry, um, mm -hmm. elements to the game. But dropping, like, Minecraft into that list and stuff like that, just be like... Yeah, the the no, case itself wasn't particularly strong, was it? I was more um more interested in the idea though. So Dodge, you've got two kids at the moment. What 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 do they play? Do you do you feel that there are any like as a parent, are there any problems with these kind of things that games are doing and putting forwards? Nah. Uh, they don't they don't really like she she might occasionally play Fortnite, my daughter. That's about it. But they're not, but like on the in, like you know, you talk about addiction, you know what I mean? Saying so I'm well vast in. Um, listen, like Chris just said, then you know, if you've got the egregious 
um, <clears throat> microtransactions, loot box mechanics, this, that, and the other. There's a case there. It's a financial thing, you know. Like you said, Asa, if you're making a game, listen, that's, you know, that's on a knife edge, you know what I mean? Because you're getting criticised now for making a game too fun too enjoyable whereas if it goes the other way they'll get lambasted for being lazy fuckers you know what i mean not enough content you know so like <clears throat> obviously i see in the article rockstar in there that could relate to the shark cards i think it is in gta online so it could be financial in that regard but like you say minecraft like chris has said minecraft is a toll i've never played it really you know what i mean but i know i know the apple you, you know and it's one of those games where you're seeing people taking the time to recreate genuine structures in the world, you know, in the Minecraft. Like, that's talent, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, I think, like, this whole thing, you know, there, there, there is addiction. There is addiction to spending money. There is addiction to gaming and never leaving your house, yeah? And health concerns. Like, that's a whole different thing. But if this guy's like, this is my son, he's playing the game a bit too much, yeah, for my liking. Because there's, look, listen, yeah, we're all different ages. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> oh, my brother-in-law, you know what I mean? He, he's probably that way where he's like, he, he doesn't really do video games. So when my nephew wants to do it, he's like, oh, he's spending too much time on it because he don't understand it. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. But as long as, it's, as long as it's innocent, as long as it's harmless, you know, I don't see no problem with that, you know? I, uh, like, we've all just sort of, you know, we, we can't say conclusively like but it just feels like a little dip your toe in the water case see what you can get a bit of go away money you know that's what it is when you when you're taking on some of the industry's big hitters you know and you're hoping they give you a little shush 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 there's a fucking few hundred grand disappear but i don't see where there's a case there you know like you wouldn't criticize a musician for saying their album was too good you know you wouldn't criticize you know a film for being too good you know, you might criticise a film for being overly long and not enjoyable, but even if it was a film that was three and a half hours long and you enjoyed every minute, it, the length of time wouldn't be a criticism. Do you know what I mean? See, so, I, I see on, that though. Tell me I'm wrong. In terms of no, you're you're, you're absolutely not wrong <laughs> because like they're, they're different things though. Because a game being too fun is not a valid criticism. Like you, obviously, a game needs to be made to be as fun as possible. But like my youngest lad keeps on going back to Roblox. There is no way that yeah. you can convince me through any logical argument that Roblox is is too fun. He's going back to it because of sinister, sinister yeah. shit that's got his hooks into him and is pulling him back and is deliberately manipulative and difficult. Oh. I, from a parenting angle, it's really difficult because he doesn't understand. I try and convince him like you you don't actually like this game. You're not having fun. You're going back to it because of this little daily login, because of this little reward, because of this dopamine hit. And kids. Do not understand that but they are still subjected to every every sinister practice that can possibly be thrown at them to get them on there and these games you know like you say with these battle passes you know the fortnights you know the call of duties and that they give you a battle pass but again on the other side of the coin yeah this is not financial outlay yeah if my boy goes to me dad i want the new call of duty season yeah and i go how much is it and he goes a tenner or whatever i go yeah, all right, that's it. If he comes back to me in a few hours and goes, right, I need these amount of COD points and this, 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 then it becomes a problem. Like battle passes, like you say, Roblox obviously isn't involved in it. I, I'm with you with Roblox. Like my daughter has gone down that rabbit hole as well at one point. Um, but battle passes are a good thing as well, you know? Like you can play a battle pass and then be told, like in this regard, oh, my my son's too addicted to the game but he might be addicted to the fact that you're playing the battle pass and unlocking you know getting things getting rewards for doing it as opposed to paying every single time you know like a loot box um mm -hmm. so yeah like i say like like i say in the, in the, in the instance of this article in this case it's like like you say it's minecraft it's gta it's um you know, like uh, for me, it would have to be a, a financial thing. I, I, I don't see how there's a case for games, as you as we put it, too good, too good that you keep going back to them. You know, it does. It does feel like I listened to a podcast earlier uh -huh. on today, though. Go on. 
there's, there's not a case against there's not a legitimate case against games being too good but i would say there is a legitimate case against battle passes for example because a battle pass oh. compels you to play whether the game is good or not once you've got, spent oh. that tenner i don't i don't do them do you know what i mean so i'm, mm. I'm just looking at it from the outside and going all right like you know free to play warzone yeah for example free to play warzone season one battle pass 10 pounds yeah that's that's your financial into the game yeah mm. i don't see a massive problem with that personally yeah when you've got in free but i don't know what they're offering you you know what i mean it might just be like a load of cosmetics you know what i mean it might be stuff that gets taken out of the game at a later point so like i said i don't really i i, I, I don't really understand that do you know what i mean but Battle passes, for what I see of them, is Call of Duty, Fortnite. Uh, I, you know, like that, that, that's pretty much it. And they're free to play game modes. So I, I, I don't, I do get your point of view. You'll probably know more than me, more games that have got more vindictive methods, like, you know, where they're in a 70 in a $70 game and then the season pass comes out and all that. Do you know what I mean? But mm. I don't, for me, it's like we're going with we're going with Minecraft. Does Minecraft have any monetization in it at all? Yeah. With regards to, it, it, so it doesn't have battle pass. They've actually they've just introduced a subscription service to Minecraft. Um, I've not really looked into what it offers you though. Um, it used to not have before Microsoft owned it. It was pretty clean on monetization, but you can buy all sorts of things now. I think. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, look, let's have it right. You know, is that not just got... extra content though? It's not like a battle pass, is it? Just I don't think, I think it's got a battle pass. Like I don't know what the subscription has. Mm -hmm. I mean, these games are like you know, these are long games. You know, whether you know Take Two and Rockstar, they have their, you know, they will get every bean out yeah that they can. Yeah, but like Minecraft's been around forever. Adding new content to the game is never a bad thing for me. Obviously, we want it for nothing. Yeah, we feel that we deserve it for nothing, but. You know, don't it's worry. Investment, like isn't it? If you think about like the investment, especially I'm using GTA Online for as an example because it's just been going forever, and its community is massive. And so, if you're an organisation which just continued to add new content, I think you've got a right to charge for it. Yeah. I think the kind of yeah darker battle passes and stuff like that. You don't really bother me. I'm not really that. I don't really yeah. have an addictive personality, so um, I, like oh. I don't really run out and buy stuff and and things like that, you know, unless I want to. And I think if I think it's a parent's job if yeah. the kids are getting drawn into something to go, you're not playing that anymore. Or you know, I, um, I I have stuff I have stuff in place for <clears throat> Amy's lad. Yeah, well, I, I have stuff in place where like the internet turns off at a certain time and stuff like that. Me and Amy have sat down and gone. We're gonna make the internet cut off at this time. So he he, you know, yeah. he comes away from his his games or he comes away from watching YouTube or something and then has like a bit more of like away from screen time, like a book or drawing or reading or comics or whatever, building a bit of Lego or something like that. But it's and then he'll if he's in the middle of kind of Fortnite or he's playing Spider Man or whatever it may be, he can <laughs> ask for like extra time and stuff if he's not going mm -hmm. to school the next day and and we're fine with that. Um but it's it's you as parents who have to go, actually this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a bit of a digital sunset, we're gonna do these things and it's not like denying him. So he can he goes on his game as much as he wants or whatever, but there's a cut off at a certain time and it's like Actually, yeah. you need to wind down now and not be full of dopamine and all this like excitement, and then go to bed and can't sleep for two hours because you're thinking about gaming or whatever. So I think it's on uh, the parents. To that's bad. He's being he's bang on as well because like obviously without going too much into it, as someone with addictive tendencies, yeah, I like I can understand. Yeah, I can understand why they put these models in. Yeah, it's no different than putting a fruit machine in a calf. Yeah, like back in the day, you used to go in there for breakfast. Next thing you know, you're sticking ten pound in a fruit machine. It's six thirty yeah. in the morning. Yeah, is how it works. Yeah, so it's down to adults. Yeah, in this regards, to 
like manage their situation if they're if they're like how i was back in the day and they go fucking hell i just done 150 quid on fifa yeah every week yeah then there are tools offered to you so that you can't spend money do you get me yeah. right yeah in the regards of children yeah the parents do have to take it's down to them to control it if they're kids you know what i'm saying like i could be very laid back and my daughter, every time, go, Dad, I want Robux. I want Robux. I want Robux. I go, yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Get, it, get out of my face. Go on. You got it all. Do you know what I mean? But I ain't doing her no favours. And then I can't complain and go, oh, she won't get off that fucking game. Because why would she? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a little bit of, look, the, you know, the game, the games companies know why they're putting these models in the games. They know why they're putting them in there. There are worse... Uh, worser exhibits you know in the industry but i know why they're doing it there because like i was going to say earlier we are in a situation now with the game industry where like every game feels like obviously not every game but most games now feel like they're aiming for every minute of your time they want you locked in you know and for a good period of time and when you're up against that, you're going to get suckered in at a certain point. You know, like I say, Dragon's Dogma. Obviously, once I beat the story, that's it. But if that was a living in world where they were going to constantly update stuff, you know, seasons like the Suicide Squad thing, you know, you're going to have season one and da 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 You know, I, I could get wrapped up in that, you know. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to the argument. You know, some blame... I don't know how old this kid is. Like, I didn't fully read the article. It's like 25. Years old. He's <laughs> 37. <laughs> no, I don't know how old he is. I don't know how long he's spending on it. Like, uh, time-wise, I don't know how much money is involved or anything like that. But if it's a young kid and it's a lot of time or it's a lot of money, that will fall back on the parent. Yeah? You can't... Like, you, you know, you can understand it. Like going, oh yeah, but why have you got their models in place? And it's like, we've got to make money, mate. Yeah, it's, it's the gaming industry. You know, one and done, don't really cut it anymore. You know, we want all the money. So, you know, that's, we could sit here arguing that one forever. You know, there, there, there's, there's no argument, many man. sides to it. No, 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 I don't mean arguing, but like I'm saying, like, you could come back in and apparently, go, yeah, but you'd son, be right. Apparently his son was 12 years old and he's now 21, so he's Taking some time, I need to bring it to. He's looking for a to... quick one. It's not he's him, it's his like... mum. Oh, son... she's looking for a quick one. It's... She wants to get and out of marriage. The son's 21, trying to go to university to further education. They can't afford it. Like, what can we do? I know, Rockstar and EA and everyone will pay your university. Is that really, <laughs> is that really the, uh, <laughs> the overall thing of the article? <laughs> no, that's like, just that's... me. <laughs> Oh, is that just you? I was going to say, that's like sat out the Sun newspaper or something. Apparently, he currently spends $350 a month on games. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if he's got a job, he can spend whatever the fuck he wants on it. Right, but right. He's now been diagnosed with a major depressive disorder and anxiety and ex experienced withdrawal symptoms such as rage, anger, and physical outbursts, according to the suit. It also alleges mm -hmm. that the mother could not How regulate old? her son's gaming because she feared... Him. <laughs> How old though, Chris? He's twenty one now, so I mean I'd just knock him out if he was my yeah, I mean, he's old enough <laughs> now to get him to wear a proper whack on him, so <laughs> yeah. Right, so anyway we're gonna... <laughs> There we go, we've children. we've solved it. Behind the, behind the curtain <laughs> behind the curtain of parenting with me. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up because I think it's it is pretty difficult to navigate it's pretty unfair yeah. for a child to have to navigate this themselves so yes parents responsibility but there are a lot of parents that are not tech savvy generally i agree with you chris like yeah. a game that's going to be providing content over time has every right to try and monetize to be able to sustain that and support that development um uh, also do think that roblox is probably evil and can see this person's like the scenario that's painted in that article being real for a good number of people where actually um, something like that does stop them from being good at school or whatever you want a kid to do. So I think there is something legitimate to it, but not like I don't think it is a strong case that they've raised whatsoever. Moving on from that, though, talking of sinister, Jim Ryan's left <laughs> Sony now. We obviously 
<laughs> we obviously knew it was coming. It was announced a long time ago that he was stepping down, but he had like six months as interim, whatever. Um, before he actually formally left the company, it has gone. Interim, he has left interim now. Interim Sony Grim Reaper. Exactly that. But I thought, you know, as he's gone now, we can take this opportunity to look back or look forward. So we can look back at his tenure and what he did at Sony, or we can look forwards to see what's coming next. And I'm going to ask you, Chris, to do both in one fell swoop. How did Jim Ryan do at Sony? What's his legacy and what's coming next? I mean, I've got a slightly different spin on it, haven't I? Because I was under him for... I'd worked with him for a, for a while and he was basically kind of a money man who ended up in a weird position. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't overly fond of the guy, to be honest. Um I saw a lot of friends get laid off. Um, yeah, I ever saw like a really talented studio go in Studio Liverpool. I think it was just mm -hmm. mismanaged. Um, there was a lot. Would of... you attribute like as far as you can attribute that to him? And not just him. I mean, there was a couple of a couple of other people at the helm at the time. You know, um, I, I was there when like Phil was in charge. I was there when. Uh, Juan Montez was in charge. I was there when um, so Michael Denny was in charge of ex-dev. Ex so I was there with like a lot of people in charge, but obviously um, Jim was a big part of that, still a director, still involved in in budgets and things like that. Um, just think, I just think he handled himself quite poorly. I mean, I've got all the time in the world for him and Hulse, obviously, I uh, spent time on the mm -hmm. River Gorilla. Um, so went over, spoke to him, um, had an interview, sat down. We discussed what we were, he was trying to achieve in terms of getting Killzone 2 out the door and things like that. <clears throat> and he was just a really nice kind of people person. So, And he enjoyed games. He was like an entrepreneur. It was obviously him, I think it was one other guy or two others, owned Gorilla. Obviously sold out to Sony and things like that. So there was a slightly different <clears throat> there's a slightly different mentality to Herman. Um but yeah, he just wasn't very affable <laughs> Jim at all. Mm -hmm. And I think he was a bit they you know, kind of cried a lot so not like actually cried, but you know, he cries a lot like as if he's the victim. Oh, we're the victim. Or Sony the victims. And it's like, I got me, yeah. So, arguably the most successful you know, console manufacturer and, and business in the world or whatever. So this kind of, oh, please don't buy Activision. And I think that was kind of the nail in the coffin for him, really. Uh, I think he'd kind of brought Sony into a bit of disrepute or whatever. And then I think, obviously, everything else, that's gone on. But we've got... The new guy now is interim, isn't he? Is he interim for six mm -hmm. or 12 months, I think, maximum? Um, yeah, I'm more of a money guy be, than Jim was. <laughs> yeah, he see, yeah, he seems to be... When I say Jim's a, a money guy, he's not really a gamer. I mean, everyone's seen the way he holds a controller. So that's not a gamer in his pictures, do you know what mm. I mean? How do I hold the controller? Do you know? Um, and, yeah, there's just a lot... So for for his kind of last move to be closing London, which he was a part of for so many years, decades, for him to kind of help expand Fire Sprite and then just chip it down again. And worst of all, to like wander into like Insomniac and go, do you know what? You kept us afloat, kept us going during COVID, the pandemic the launch of a new console and stuff, but I'm still going to lay a load of people off. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. Like, people... I've seen a few people on Twitter have the arguments, oh, it's only, like, ancillary positions and stuff like that. It's like, but it's a fucking job. It's someone's livelihood. It's someone's put something into that business. Someone supported the business. And if you look at other people in Insomniac, they weren't happy that those people got laid off. Um, So it was just a bit of a bizarre... And I know, Joe, you know, we... We've had this discussion about businesses need to like downsize and they need to do various things and that, but it's just the 
the summary, the horrend- horrendous summary was like a week earlier where he was with London studio having photos, knowing full mm. well that he was going to close that a week later. It's just an arsehole thing to do or whatever. So, yeah, obviously I'm not as big a fan. <laughs> I, just yeah. can't, I, just can't <laughs> that. I'm not, I just, I want to see, I mean, like we've said before, we're starting to see you know, Sony games come to PC. So go to Tsushima, you know, these things. I want to see day and day. I want to, it, it's my primary pl- platform now. So if Sony want to put games on day and day, they can have me money because I'll buy them. I haven't got a problem buying games. Um, and I think this new guy is a bit more, you know, on the fill side of things. Actually, we probably need to put our put our products a bit a bit further afield. Really, do you think he's likely to to make any kind of strategic changes like that? Because he's an interim guy, and he seems to be fairly yeah. brutal in terms of cuts and things. But yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it depends on how it depends on how desperate the board are, aren't they? Depends on whether they mm-hmm. want to. Quick change, I think. Joe, you, know, you only look, have to look at the quality of Nixus as like you know ports, really good. You know Alex Battaglia always praises them in terms of Joe you know, the options that you've got in terms of graphical PC options and um yeah. So why not just carry on utilizing? Joe, you know, why buy that studio and and then you know, wait two or three years? To, yeah. to start putting a game over, it just you've got all of the not all, but you've got all the people in chat, you've got a lot of people on Game and Arcade Discord, you've got a lot of people on Twitter who are PC gamers and would quite happily buy any Sony game that comes to PC if it was their day and date. Um, obviously, Step Lad's got a PS5, so I can play on that when I need to, but. I wouldn't if he didn't. I wouldn't go out and buy one, so um, because I'm playing most of the stuff on PC. So it just depends on where the boards are. Depends on the monetary situation. Depends on whether they're all right being so far behind, you know, other organisations, or whether they want to do something a little bit different. Depends on whether the game and community and market moves in such a way where. So you can't just rely on the console hardware on its own. You need to mm-hmm. at least tap into the different um, markets. But yeah, I'm not sure. It depends on whether he's just kind of steady in the ship and waiting for someone else or whether he's being tasked within those six or 12 months. You've got to do A, B and C and you know, get the replacement in. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm sure to be like... looking internally as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think his his biggest kind of mandate while he's interim is um, is trimming the fat rather than rather than steering the ship, um, being brutal with the axe and cutting costs wherever they can because that's what the industry is doing right now. But he also said, this is Jim Ryan, um, that the PlayStation Five is on course to be the most successful PlayStation on multiple vectors, without elaborating on on what these vectors what are. Vectors are. Yeah, um, <laughs> the multiple vectors of him, his chart in his bedroom, just saying <laughs> the yeah. Jim Ryan vector of I'm happy with sales, I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm happy with the power usage. <laughs> it seems because they also confirmed at the same time he said the PlayStation 2 sold 160 million units. Um, yeah, PlayStation 5 is not going to get close to that, is it? It's uh, no. like 50 at the moment no. or something. So, not even with a PS5 Pro, not if to, they're bringing out fucking pros, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Dodge, what's next? What, what's I'll the ideal like, scenario I'll... for for Jim Sony Ryan. going forward? I, well, you, you say Jim about no, 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 no. I, I thought you was going to lead into Jim, but now you're asking me about Sony going forward. Dodge right, is training right? Jim to be a lead roofer. I uh, he roof. ain't. He can't even hold a fucking plastic gaming <laughs> controller properly. Ain't going to work with lead. Well, um, yeah, I. Jim Ryan's a weird one. I, I like look at him, and I think obviously not as severe like, but I see him as like a Don Matrick type for PlayStation. Like he sort of took over at the arse end of Sean Layden's reign with the bangers, you know, the exclusives. Um, rode his luck on a few of them, signed off on a few remasters, you know. Um, acquired Bungie. Signed up on Bungie. He got, yeah, acquired Bungie, which looks like a complete ball ache at the minute for them 
Um, Sony hierarchy I ain't happy with that at all. And like Tony, Tony in the chat there said he can see Bungie going exclusive. I mean, the way it looked with Sony is like they're just a fucking shit show. And I mean, obviously, there's people who got sort of like they got weighed out from the acquisition who are just quite happily going to sit there to get paid out. Like they're just idle, you know what I mean? So it's it, you know you got that weirdness with regards to. Oh, Oki Koki or whatever his name is, the guy who's come in. He, um, <laughs> <laughs> the little British, oh, little British humour there. Oh, Oki Koki, that's his name. <laughs> but he, uh, where he's coming, you sound about trimming the fat, swinging the axe, doing this, doing that. Yeah, you can look at it on a cost cutty one, but you'll also be looking at raising costs. And I can see, like, obviously, we said he took, he started the job on Monday. Uh, and I re replied to a tweet saying, like, hopefully we get news of The Last of Us 2 um, and Spider-Man 2 PC ports by the end of the week because hopefully that's what he does. Hopefully he doesn't. He's just, you know, obviously, like, we speculate, you know what I mean? But hopefully day and day PC, you know, like some people in the chat are saying there, depending on the game and this, that and the other. But hopefully they lean into that direction because it's just a, it's an influx of money. Like Horizon Forbidden West came out recently and it didn't do as well as zero dawn on launch so you know maybe they at first their approach was well let's leave it two years or 18 months or whatever and then drop it on pc maybe now they're thinking fuck it one lot of marketing you know hype the game up because they market well sony so if they're going day one ps5 you know pc one lot of marketing get people on board instead of just doing a blog post like they have been doing which is like, oh, Ghost of Tsushima coming PC in May. You know, you, you want to you want a little bit of whip up about it. But yeah, Jim Ryan, like he was just a bit of a like, a bit like a Ronald McDonald character, wasn't he? Really, he just sort of came in, talked big, and then like when the OABK kicked off, he acted like fucking someone who'd been living in a doorway, you know, for like months, and uh. I just got made to look an absolute prat with that. And uh, just every, I think, just look at his reign. Like people say about Don Matrick, you know, you've got Xbox 360 with Peter Moore and, you know, the exclusives and the, and the first party stuff and everything. And, you know, Xbox 360 innovating Xbox achievements, Xbox Live, all this stuff. Um, and then Don Matrick comes in and goes, TV. And it's just like, what? Like, it's like you, you go from one extreme to the other, whereas he wasn't that bad. Uh, but he was more like a caretaker. You know what I mean? He got the job, but he, he didn't really do anything. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I reckon Oki Koki in the six months he's there probably do more good for Sony um, than bad. Like I say, there might be cuts, as you say. We we're not privy to that. At the end of the day, they got they got they got ledger sheets. They got they got their they got to prop their numbers right. So there might be a bit of that. But he's going you know, he's going in at the same time that so Phil Spencer was saying in his more public interview that like they have to deliver growth because otherwise why would shareholders have shares? Um, that's the way the industry works. And if you can't actually grow, the only way to deliver growth is to cut costs. And that's why the industry is doing yeah. what it's doing, which is. The harsh and horrible reality of it all. Um, it would be nice if the world didn't work that way, but it does. So, and he's a financial guy. He's less of a gamer than Jim Ryan was. He's come from the mobile division and is is there to to get their shit in order, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah. um, I'm less bothered about whether they do the day and date thing or not. Like it would suit me personally. I'd get their games on PC for sure. I would, but I also, I just, like, I just if, feel like the Horizon Forbidden West whether or not they deem it a disappointment or not, it got compared directly. They were saying like every single PlayStation game that had launched on mm. PC, it's success rate. And obviously Helldivers is fucking there at the front. Yeah, like Helldivers has gone crazy. Yeah. It was a day and day game, you know. And then they said like Forbidden West hadn't even done as well in his first week or whatever the metric was based over a week or two as zero dawn and i'm just saying like even me with my dopey roof ahead yeah i'm thinking if we're going to do all this marketing budget why not just at the bottom just have pc and playstation you know, open mm -hmm. or the other way around do you know what i mean but what i'm saying is the pc gamers because playstation's everywhere you know probably people before they watch this show go live tonight it's probably a playstation advert you know what i mean so 
it just it, you know on premium well yeah i know yeah. That's obvious but you know what i'm getting at like <laughs> you know i just think it's just free free marketing that you're going to spend just to change the literature on the game and and, 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 and like i say that that they're stranding too hopefully it'll be the first one mm -hmm. Um, because as far as I'm concerned, it looks like the only sort of second party exclusive that they've got coming next. So, um, yeah, we'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But Okie Koki will do better than Jim. Don't worry about that. I reckon not. I reckon he's gonna, huh? from our perspective, getting the games at the end of it, I reckon he's gonna be responsible for cuts more than anything beneficial, and that's because, like, that's what the company needs but um in my little like idealistic world of just wanting good games all the time i don't think he's gonna be a positive there question yeah mm. if okey Goki comes in yeah and he starts swinging the axe about right why is he swinging the axe is it because he just fancies them cuts or is it because jim dropped a fucking bollock over yeah, his tenure right. if, the if only the reason the axe will get swung you're always going to get the guy who's going to be the hate guy and go oh he came in and he fucking but someone's got to correct the shit you know what i'm saying so i know you said he's not going to steer it, it together they've had for the last six months if i've had one hand on the axe and they've already done most of that work yeah but i'm saying well, who's, at, who's at, wrongs at, are they writing look at fire spray for example now i know there's loads of talented people at Fire Sprite, but obviously um, Sony were kind of funding that and funding some of the projects, so they were kind of helping them out and stuff like that. Does anyone in the chat or here think that Fire Sprite have released like a banger, you know, 90 plus meta, brilliant game that people will talk about forever? Astro Joe as like a nice little platformer or whatever it was really good, but there's no like critic critically acclaimed title there, is there? Fire Sprite had nearly two hundred and ninety people working for it. Two hundred and ninety people. Fucking mad wage. Mad wage, Bill. Mm-hmm. It's like why like... why did it grow that big? Why 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 did they allow it to be that big? And the thing is with cuts like you know it's always a mismanagement thing as we've said before i say it's always the higher ups you know what i mean who are like misforecasting and overspending and this that and the other and ultimately it's the developers who pay the cost at the end do you know what i mean but if there are cuts it's because they have to be do you know what i mean it's not because they choose like yeah fuck yeah mm. do you know what i mean but I know, I know what you're saying and there's 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 ways of looking at it but what i'm saying is if matey comes in and like we say, he starts swinging the axe about. If that's what he has to do to get Sony back on track to be a better PlayStation going forward, you know, like I'm saying, we always look at these people and go, oh, he was a right prick, that geezer. You remember when he came in and done all that? But then if in 10 years' time, PlayStation are thriving again, yeah, it may be because of what he uh, Do you know what I mean? So it's like... Mm -hmm. it's, there's, there's ways of looking at it, you know what I mean? But like I say, Jim shouldn't get off scot-free. Once matey comes in, if he's going to be as lethal as you reckon he's going to be, a lot of that's going to come back on Jim. Like, it has to, you know, because you can't do... What what, what do he do there? Like, four years? To be, to be four? clear, though, I don't think he's going to start swinging the axe now. Like, it's, it's happened already. Beyond. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it'll <laughs> get announced, possibly. But what I'm no, saying no, it's is... it's already been announced. Like, I think the cuts that we've already had, yeah. that's his legacy like possibly but well. what i'm saying one hand on the ass what i'm saying each. if jim if he if he if he's swinging it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, he made that call yeah then jim weren't making the call but then it would have been making them at a loss you get me so what i'm saying is it but might that, have needed someone yeah. with the bollocks to come in and go hold tight we're fucking hemorrhaging badly here yeah we need to cut this off yeah, and, and, and Jim ain't doing it. And this is what I'm saying to you. When you look at Jim, like, he has taken them backwards. You know, they've got no game this year. And I don't know, there might be some in there and there going, oh, the rise of Ronan. It's like it's Team Ninja game. You know, it's, they're, like, they're, they're... it's like so shady said in the chat. It's like Jim is a dreamer. The new guy is a realist. And I think that's... Yeah. The... Jim basically just turned around and went, we're just going to make remaster after remaster after remaster. And we're just, yeah. Imagine a new business coming into gaming and going, we're just going to remaster our old back catalogue or whatever. 
Um, and there's some games worth remastering, but it's just like, come on, yeah. like, you know, an next gen upgrade we want a 10 or 4. Uh, fucking remaster of a remaster we want 40 quid for. We want nothing you unique there. Customers for a fucking ride. Yeah. It's like, get some new products out, get some new. And on Jim's watch, like he went fucking all in on PSVR 2. Look where that is now. Yes. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> that's why I. That's why I was just defending him because he got his PSV. I'm not defending him. You're miss. You're not listening if you think I'm defending him. I'm just saying I don't think this new guy is necessarily uh, like. And is it? And is it? Joe, is the new guy going? Actually, fuck this shit. Let's get the PSV two on PC now because our audience. It... We've got an audience there. We're not necessarily and stop. Our Sony customer base is not necessarily going to move there. But we've got a new audience there. So if I was there, this I'd could well like, be Let's... him. But this is a move where, for me, I've already said about the VR thing. This is them cutting development of any piece um, VR games. So if this is yeah. him, then I hate him. Um, but I'm not. I'm not going to attribute that to him because I don't know what's going on there. You know. Um, I That's... just he is interim, right? And I'm not sure what kind of strategic decisions he's interested in making while he's there, besides shrinking costs. Um, and you don't really like it. Would kind of suck us if he makes massive long-ranging decisions going into the future when it's not actually going to be his job for more than a few months so really you kind of want yeah. someone with a vision to come in and execute on that vision rather than the interim guy to go this is the vision and we'll just like somebody else can do it for me but well, Sony must have uh, they, obviously I don't know this geezer I, I don't know anything about this fella yeah but the fact that they've gone you're the guy for six months your job is turn it you know do what you got to do because at the minute, it's carnage. Yeah, like that. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> they're not happy. Like right? Sony shareholders, all that, they're not happy with it. They had to make big changes, you know. And uh, mate, he's going in there now. So obviously, you know, heads will roll and heads, heads have rolled, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, it will be, I believe, it will be down to mismanagement on Jim's part. Like Shady said, obviously, the geezer was a fucking dreamer. You know, obviously, he, he headed up. What, what, what did he head up? Was it PlayStation Europe? That's where he came from, right? He was like, well, he came out. from London. He came from London originally. That's what makes so, it. He worked his way so up the chain. That he closed the place. Yeah, so he's worked his way up the chain. Yeah, but then once you're the big, the big cheese, yeah, it's fucking it's carnage. You know, he put all that investment in live service models and. This, that, and the other, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh fucking hang on, we don't want to do that. Actually, we want to go back, and then it's like, well, you've got no games. Like, don't get me wrong. Luckily for them, Xbox keep fucking tripping over their own feet. You know what I mean? Like, not that's not a knock, yeah, but that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. Starfield, Starfield, I have felt was a good game, yeah, but had that gone a completely, if that was a must play, you know, and uh, and if the digital library thing weren't a thing, who knows what would be happening now? You know, so Jim had to go. Who knows? Let's talk about because he just reminded me about games. So let's Ooh. move on from Jim Ryan because he's gone. Um, he's unlike Xbox, he was never actually that like in the spotlight anyway. Um, Chris like obviously had quite a lot of insight because he worked with him directly, which makes that really interesting. But he's gone. New guys in. Sony are going to Sony. We're going to see the fruits of that many years into the future probably. But in the meantime, we've got games. Ken Levine's been talking about Judas. This happened on Wednesday last week, which means it just missed this show. Um, Chris, are you, are you a System Shock, Bioshock kind of fan? Did you see the stuff about Judas? Massive Bioshock fan, so that can't come soon enough for me. Absolutely loved Bioshock. Loved, <clears throat> loved, loved all of them, even. I know some people were kind of like, oh, the Infinite wasn't as good, and this, that, the other. Just the world, the gameplay, obviously the... Uh, art style etc so yeah due about time we get another Levine masterpiece so um yeah I can't wait for it so did you happen to see he's been talking to um he it was IGN Jeff Keeley and skill up I think and there's an awful lot of information they actually gave probably too much to, to actually consume all of it I think he got a little bit carried away and started talking about the ending of the game as well at one point but um Spoilers. Have you seen much of it? That's a yeah. himself. Very much. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so I've seen, obviously, video stuff. I've seen bits of um, 
the recent kind of interview and stuff. But I'm such a huge fan that I didn't mm-hmm. want to kind of delve too much into it for that like spoiler reason. Obviously, um, it, so it's it's clearly like the spiritual successor to it, isn't it? It's got like similar mechanics and all kinds in. Um, so I guess he's just finally got to the point where he can he can um, make another Bioshock, but obviously not call it Bioshock. Um, yeah, like I can't wait for it. But as I said, I've tried to like skip. I've seen a lot of video footage. I've seen obviously screenshots and stuff like that, um, artwork. But um, luckily, I didn't delve too much into it, so I didn't get to read the spoiler kind of mm-hmm. end of Obviously, a few people had spoken about them just giving the game away. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly aesthetically and functionally very much like a spiritual successor to his previous works. Um, it's very recognisably his work. And you could you could see, it's obviously not going to because of IP and all the rest of it, but you could, you could see it tying back to Bioshock directly if they wanted it to. Yeah. Um, Bioshock in space is, is fair. The thing that it's kind of adding and the, the reason that it's taking so long is... Um, is that the story is more modular. Uh, they call it, like, he talks a lot, a lot about Lego-style building blocks, whereby, uh, depending on how you choose to engage and interact with various characters and things, everything about it will shift and change for each player going through it. So, um, the, yeah, like, from story to level design to, like, events that take place as you go through, it's all going to shift and change. Dodge, have you seen any of this? Have you paid attention to it? Have you played the Bioshock I- games? So I'm literally carbon copy of Chris. Like I, I love Bioshock so much. Like I've said about Death Stranding last week. Like Bioshock was like right at the top, the first one, and Infinite as well. But even two, like I think Ken, he does a really good job. Like with his stories, for me, obviously it's a subjective topic. So I'm not going to sit here and go, this one's better than that one, and da 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 da. All three of them for me are good games. You know, the whole thought process, the universes, or not the universes so much, but the settings, you know, Rapture and uh, Columbia, <laughs> and and um, and that just, just good. Yeah. So, with that in, in mind, when I started hearing about this uh, preview last week, um, I was hearing uh, spoiler heavy, like it went a little bit OTT with it, and mm-hmm. I've not bothered with it because i don't want to know too much i do want to know about the game i remember when it was revealed um i was very very interested in it um but i don't want to spoil everything you know what i mean so i've seen some bits and pieces that they're talking about like there's going to be apparently some roguelike yeah elements to it uh procedural Mm -hmm. generate uh generating stuff like that but i'm just sort of like Sometimes I don't want to know too much, and, and and I can do I can deal with little bits. You know what I mean? When I get little bits, it keeps me hungry for it. You know, if you fucking dump a load on me, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like it's too much. So very very like I'm really looking forward to this. It looks clean, like everything that I've seen of it so far, whether or not it's pre-rendered sort of cinematics or stuff like that. It, it looks like gameplay. Some of the stuff I'd seen before. Um, it just looks like it's going to be a really good game. It does look like it's going to be a really good game. It's only got, um, in terms of things that are not concerning, concerning, and pretty much any concerns that I've got are alleviated by the sheer fact that, that Ken Levine is so passionate about it, so passionate that he can't help but talk about the parts that he shouldn't. And in terms of like creative energy, though, you kind of you want to see that enthusiasm. It bodes very well for it being a very good game at the end of it. But it does only feature essentially. Th- three characters and so the player character and then and three other ones that are central to the way the story plays out as far as we know from what we're saying anyway um and that story being modular and procedural to an extent shifting and changing for each player that goes through it means it might i I don't know how loose or how tight or how well paced it's going to end up being delivered to the player at the end of it um we won't know that until we get to play i suppose and again they're not really concerned um, um Self published. What's the uh, release date? Sorry, what's the estimate? It's got a publisher. Uh, 2025 sometime. I don't think it's been yeah. more specific. No, Self published by them, and it Ghost Story. You know, like Bioshock was 2K, wasn't it? 
he talked a lot about yeah. the funding, so it might be self-published, but it's being funded by someone who believes in his vision. Yeah, it'll be funded by... Uh... Yeah, yeah investors or something like, yeah, sure. but it's yeah. not got a, it's not got a big time publisher funding it. You know what I mean? So mm. maybe he's, like, I'm, it's not like me to downplay him and say like, oh, you know. But what I'm saying is because it's sort of indie-ish, you know, self-published title with funding. Um, maybe he has to do that extra, you know, to to make sure that it it does well. You know, he ain't going to come out there and go, yeah, it's all right. Like, do, do you get me? Like, he's got a product mm -hmm. to sell, but. Based upon his CV, I have every reason to believe everything he says. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'll be there day one. I don't think there's a date for it, is there? There's still is, no. was it meant? Is no, this no, year? Though, five, I think. Yeah, the wiki the wiki page on it here says it's expected to release by uh, March 2025. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. yeah. I'm vaguely somewhere around there and it's been in the works for 10 years already i think um reason that he cited for it taking so long is this lego section of it like the modular nature of it and the scope and scale and how much it can deviate so we shall see <laughs> ladder over there or isn't yet um thank you ftw so let's do oh i forgot to say pete i saw you gift the membership back there it was a long time ago um but thank you very much for doing that much 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 appreciated Let's go on to. Sorry, I was just gonna say it looks like a take two it involves again. Still, if you oh, go to Ghost Story, again? if you go to Ghost Story Games' website, uh, take two at the bottom of it, and it says uh, copyright two thousand two to two twenty uh, to twenty twenty four. Take two interactive software, including published by Game Story Games, uh, Ghost Story Games, Judas Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite, Irrational Games, Ghost Story Games. Take Two interactive software and related logos or trademarks of Take Two. Yeah, because that goes Speaking of Take Two. Okay. Speaking yeah. of Take Two, they just bought Gearbox. They did. Yeah, they did. Which um, that's that's interesting, isn't it? Um, Chris, Borderlands yeah. fan. Um, do you know what? It was all right. I was more of an original Gearbox fan, so Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway, and those type of games, absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. I've got them on my shelf behind there somewhere. It's dark back there. Pull them out, but it is very dark. <laughs> um, I'm... Yeah, so I, I mean, I'd, I wish they'd remake the you know, brother, um, brother, Brothers in Arms series and stuff like that. They were fucking great. I don't mm. know if you remember, but it was kind of like a first-person World War Two game, but then you could go into like a little RTS mode and send your troops. Oh, it's a fucking great game. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was more into those games than I was Borderlands. Obviously, the first Borderlands had a bit of co-op with Colt Eastwood back in the day and stuff like that, but, yeah, it just got a bit bored of me. Mm. So, Gearbox... Obviously, they've been um, owned by Embracer for a while now, a um, couple of years maybe, but I'm guessing at that I don't really understand the passage of time. It's been a while. Um, I think they previously did the Borderlands games with Take-Two, though, and probably Tiny Tina, like the spin-off as well. So presumably more of that to come. Darge, do you do you like Take-Two as a publisher and Gearbox? Gearbox were formerly a publisher. Unfortunately, part of this acquisition, their, their whole publishing arm was laid off in the process because they they are no longer required now that take two are there but do you like take two as a publisher and do you like gearbox in terms of their developer status things they've made i mean take two the thing is like with take two is obviously they got a beautiful chris they um, are beautiful chris they got they got their NBA series with 2K and, you know, sports games are sports games, you know, they're going to be heavy, heavily monetized, you know, like FIFA. Um, but I actually don't, I don't mind like 2K, you know, some good, like say Bioshock and, and stuff like that back in the day. I don't mind, I don't mind them so much. Um, but with Gearbox, I mean, I, the only game I played of theirs was by Borderlands 3 and I have, really enjoyed it yeah and I, I got to the end game and messed around there for a little bit um but i think it's borderlands 2 and it is the one that everyone loves mm -hmm. and um yeah, I'd, I'd never played so i enjoyed free yeah and i feel like 
them looty shooty type games that did a good job for me like you know like i enjoyed that and i kind of thought i i've i've got tiny tina's um on my steam library i just still haven't played it yet and dealer um he he said it was a good game like he said it was good you know carried on in that sort of vein of theirs with loot shooter and that well three was uh, the one that i played co-op wasn't it with colton dealer? with us and uh, yeah yeah we, we was all sort of dabbling with that one um so you know at the end of the day, you, you kind of embrace her just a fucking shit show. I mean, like on the other, like you know, they they even had the front to come out with the uh, they had like a conference thing, didn't they? And the guy was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have to start thinking twice about ac- acquisitions." <laughs> like, do you reckon, mate? Do you reckon you're gonna have to think about it? Like, I think people are gonna have to think about getting acquired by them. But um, hopefully, I mean, Randy Pitchford's a bit of a fucking crank, and he's a bit yeah. of a wild guy, but. Um, yeah. The devs, you know, all the developers who work for the team and all that, you just want them to just work. You know what I mean? You want them to just be comfortable, like, secure, and go and work. And if that's with Take Two, I might be for them, you know? And and if they've already come out and said that Borderlands 4 is, like, basically the next game they're working on. So I'm all right with that, and, and we'll just see what comes of it. I mean, the other thing mm-hmm. I was made up with, I don't know if we touched the body. Last time, I don't know, I may have, may have fell asleep and forgot about our last episode, but um, obviously Relic going independent from Sega. Yes, yes. Got, yeah, got a lot that. of time for that. Got a lot of time for Relic, so. Yeah, they they went, they bought themselves, they went independent rather than going to yeah, the they publisher. Went independent, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it was that kind was... of like with the support of Sega, not financially, you know, to go independent because I think yeah. they would have ended up getting a lot of... Uh, chopping a bit like obviously creative assembly got hit and stuff like that so um it's nice to see them kind of go back alone and then hopefully we'll see some like homeland and company of heroes they're going to continue to support and um yeah it's just a really good rts studio i'm trying to remember if it was um a relic and creative assembly were were parallel in a lot of ways in that they were pc centric strategy centric studios working for sega but partnering elsewhere as well and i can't remember if it's creative assembly or relic that are currently working on a microsoft ip as well Um, relic have obviously done so in the past with age of empires and some other stuff um yeah halo wars and things like that but hopefully whatever they're cooking is still coming and yeah hopefully that studio will do well independently in terms of gearbox um I actually don't particularly like Take Two as a publisher. I'm skeptical of them, I should say. In the in the like ranking of publishers that I don't trust, everybody in the world hated EA for a time, right? EA were voted like worst company in the world three years in a row or something. But for me, Activision were the worst above them, and Take Two sat somewhere in between. Um, in terms of the way that well, shark cards for one thing, and the way they monetize everything else. So. Um, Hopefully. I mean, publishers are publishers and they're all in it for money at the end of the day, so I'm not going to find any nice ones, but at the same time, they are pouring money into the hobby that I love and they are the reason that I get most of the games that I get to play, so swings and roundabouts. Gamsley has asked, what would you like out of a new Borderlands game? So Borderlands 4, right, most people love 2. 3 was supposed to be a pretty good, well-polished, decent release of a game, but it didn't set the world on fire in the same way as 2 kind of did. What do you think they should do, Chris? What do you want them to deliver to you personally in Borderlands Four? I mean, I was a, I was a bit more, I was more of a two fan, like a lot of people were. So just mm. a bit more, a bit more of that. Um, so a well performing game, obviously plenty of uh, co op in. I like a lot of like co op in the games. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't touch. I, I did a bit of like co op in three. And got quite bored of it. Um, but obviously, I had a good laugh with, with with the lads at the time. Um, so to be fair, I could live without the Borderlands, and I'd, I'd like to see like a a current gen Brothers in Arms all day long. I think it's it just really unique um, mm-hmm. gameplay loop and stuff like that. So I'd like to see them expand upon that a bit now, given the new engines we've got, given the hardware we've got, you could do a lot more. Um, with that, with that game, that's a good answer. So, what Chris wants from Borderlands Four is to not exist. He wants Brothers in Arms instead, <laughs> which is fair. Just for it um, to be Brothers in Arms instead. <laughs> 
That's a, that's a decent answer, to be fair. Um, do you know why, like, what three did differently to two? Why did you like two more than three? Is there anything you can put your finger on? Or? Do you know what? I don't know if it was... I think, you know, sometimes you have those, like, snapshot moments in gaming where you just have, like, really good friends playing it, really good, like, experience and stuff like that. So I don't know if it was, like, the whole combo. Not the game um, that's changed with you. Yeah, just like, yeah, just going right. back to... Going back to like Battlefield Vietnam days and stuff where we used to play it at lunch and Sony and it used to just be the fucking best game going. You know, mm. it was kind of a server, internal server, private server, two full teams of all Joe you know, internal Sony people and you were just like shouting across the room at each other and stuff like that. So I don't know if it was just the whole kind of, um, yeah, it was just like everything about it. it was kind of like the experience with mates and, and things like that. And I yeah. think it just didn't feel as didn't feel as complete or as polished. It felt a little bit empty in places when from what I played three and it didn't kind of grab me as much. So obviously I'm like Dar who enjoyed it and stuff, I came into it late because then he'd already kind of got to the end game and it was like Colt and Dealer wanted to kind of play through it again. And it, mm-hmm. like told me to get get a copy and play it and stuff and yeah it was just a week or so we played it and then it just didn't really grab me um so but I could have been in a weird mental place at the time because it was kind of that period where I'd stop playing games for for a bit so yeah. it might be one to revisit at some point. It's a difficult thing for long running long running IP in general. Like the audience does change more than they necessarily want the game to change. Dodge. Yeah. Borderlands four. What do you need? Yeah. Oh, just you know, like even though three was the only one that I played, like Chris sort of hit the nail on the head. Like the end game just felt a bit empty, you know? Um but obviously Gearbox, you know, like you know. It's all well and good these people buying each other and all that, but you want Take Two to buy a gearbox and then not obviously go as every penny we got to make a game, but just support the vision of the team so that they can make the best game possible to their like to the vision that they want. So Borderland Four, uh, just better end game, um, you know, a roadmap of sort going forward where it's a game where you know like cause a lot of these games want all your time yeah but then they've got no fucking plan for it and they're like stuff will come when we come i like a roadmap you know what i mean and it doesn't have to hit dates bang on you know things can get pushed you know circumstances can can arise but just an idea if you're going to be a looter shooter with an end game give me like look at the fucking state of that suicide squad do you know what i mean like they bring the joker thing in and then paul tassie who I've been following it, he actually didn't mind the base game. He didn't praise it, but he said, like, it wasn't that bad. The mm. end game is soulless. And then they brought the Joker in, thinking that was going to be the shock of life to the game. And he's like, nah, it's just the same stuff, but they've just moved a couple of bits about. You know what I mean? It's like fucking moving a couple of sofas around in your living room and going, oh, it's a brand new house. It's like, it's not. You know, so... um yeah, just just if it's gonna be if it's gonna be um, a live servicey, you know, end gamey type game, just plan it out and, and execute and make it a bit more fun. But yeah, no, I hope they don't make it a live service game for one. I'm quite I'm quite content with a like a start finish contained game. We need more of those, I think, rather than every game wanting yeah. all your time. But for me, obviously, the thing that I want from Borderlands is is VR again. You know, Borderlands 2 was available in VR and it was it was all right, except they criminally stripped out what made Borderlands good. They put it into VR, but they took out the multiplayer. That would have been a hell of a game if it was Borderlands 2 VR and you could play it in multiplayer with other people. But they kind of gutted one of the most core like elements of what made Borderlands good in order to to bring it to that platform. Which was such a shame. Such a shame. I would still be playing that at the moment if they had multiplayer in it. It would have just been incredible. So I'm not going to get that in Borderlands 4, but that's not what you asked. You asked what I want from it. That's what I want from it. And now that we're on to questions, let's carry on that little vibe and do our, our community questions. We've got a few lined up, I think. We are going to finish promptly when we've done our two hours. So we're going to get as many questions as we can. 
running up to shout that. I know Chris is desperate to go and play Dragon's Dogma too. Yeah, just Wonder. shout out to Patrick as well, who's uh, just dropped a load of game codes in the, <laughs> in the Discord. Like, nice one, Patrick. You top bloke. Thanks, Patrick. Where does he drop them? In the giveaways. In the giveaways channel. Quick, Chris, grab them. Um, your brother, Chris. Poison Cop has asked, if you could all only play one game for the rest of your days, what would it be? And Chris is not allowed to pick Red Dead 2. Oh, no. So, Chris, I'm going to give you a minute to think about that as you're not allowed your top choice. Dodge, what's yours? Um, one game. Mm. For the rest of my days. <laughs> Yeah, probably be naked, naked twister or something. <laughs> and my no, stamina I don't know. or your? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, there's no stamina, mate. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, because it would have been like back in the day, it would have possibly been like something like FIFA, something like when you just <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pro Evo Four. You know, if you get me that, I, I'd play that for the rest of my days, but. I don't know, you know, because I've sort of changed. I used to be quite multiplayer centric, you know, like Call of Duties and Fifas and this, that, and the other, and all that. Now I'm just sort of single player, so I don't know. Yeah, I'd probably just say, just say Pro Evo Four. We have to get it in every week, don't we? Pro Evolution Soccer yeah. Four. So <laughs> yeah, we'll go Thank with that. Thanks, mate. I have to bring all the caveats in. It depends. I need to understand if this one game forever is going to keep getting new content, or if we need like. This is it. This is what you've got. You've got to stick with what you've got forever. In which case, probably Rocket League. I could play that forever. Um, as long as there were people to play with, this is another like another it's angle good. to the question. Am I playing this alone? I'm playing it alone. It's... Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> just shooting yeah. into an empty goal. In which case, Skyrim VR. I've got. You can't see it at the moment, but I've got a Skyrim display because I anticipated that that's where I will eventually die. I'll be running around in Skyrim VR at the end of my days. So. Uh, exactly, it's Stephen. Skyrim, yeah, Skyrim VR is the one. Yeah. Depends how long I'm planning to live, though. Like, because Skyrim's obviously got a finite amount of content. So if it's going to be a long life, then I'd need something that's going to go on beyond that. But it's probably not going to be. So, yeah, Skyrim VR. Let's do the next question, please. Uh, it's a long question from, I, I'm i going to say Omatoni, but I don't think I'm reading that correctly. I don't know how you're supposed to say the, the, Discord the name there. Get my it is a Discord question. The game forever. I've just oh, yeah, Chris, I forgot. Sorry, go for okay, it. Just... Go on, Chris. Yeah. Uh, mine's going to be a bit of a careful. Uh, Company of Heroes oh. series. It's fucking such a good and they game. They kind of have the whole series, yeah. one game. <laughs> yeah, well, Company of Heroes 3. Cause they just That's what I wanted to know if it is the latest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's got lots of, uh, yeah, lots of stuff to do in the campaign, different campaigns and stuff like that. So, yeah. Fair enough. Unexpected. Right, so the next one is here in chat. It is, question for the panel, how would you feel if the next generation Xbox and or PlayStation decided to go 100% dockable handheld, thus removing the standard console box? And a follow-up to that, do you think that a handheld-only market would cause Xbox and PlayStation to release new devices more often? <laughs> I don't, Dodge. I don't, you yeah, know, like he's he's saying that how would i feel you know i think handheld is a great option i don't think it should be the a option you know it's it's an option for you if you're on the go this that and the other but you can't be like you know sort of fucking the higher powered local hardware you know to sort of push you know what you're yeah. getting you know it's all well and good if we can sit here now and go oh well what if they made a handheld that could give you fucking 14, 40, 120. Well, then a native box would be doing like 4K fucking, you know, crazy stuff, you know? So, um, unless it was almost like a rock ally though, with a little external GPU and you dock it in, get superpower, you know, I mean, your they... 4K, 4K 60 yeah. malark, and then you uh, undock it and you've got. I, can't, to... I think they should I, I i i believe and i think they should handheld the handheld market now has proven itself the switch mm -hmm. obviously has done what it has done um steam deck I'm more units what, than the ps5 actually i reckon it's just gonna i'll tell them yeah um, but it, the the the, <laughs> the rog the rog ally the steam deck you know the lenovo legion this that and the other 
proves that there is a handheld market. You know, how much? It, it's not going to be the market. You ain't going to sell 160 million PlayStation handhelds. The Rock Allies just reduced as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I see, and yeah, I see that. But I think I think they should going forward now. I think like there's the rumor around the Xbox this time around, and you know everything else. But I think they should just make one box. You know, just have a console, yeah, and then have a uh, a handheld alternative later down the line you know and and just keep because we was talking the other night in discord about xbox and it's like xbox have got well with the not rumored but we see the photographs of the fucking tall white oblong like they, they're gonna have four consoles on market they're gonna have someone obviously just the, the seat. Someone just yeah the someone <laughs> fucking put that in a room where they're painting the ceiling but they you know, they've got the Series X, the digital, and then they've got the Series S, and uh, and the one with the higher. There's one with a higher storage, isn't it? Yeah, the Series, series S. Well, the black. The, the black, black. Yeah, so they're gonna. For, there's too much going on, you know. And I think like the did Series S do enough for Xbox? Only they tell us. I know they say enough, but when they look at it internally, but I just think have one box. Don't. You know, just I just have the box, give it to them, and then the alternative is a handheld device. Yes. Um, and, and, and you know, when we spoke last week about Steam and Epic and, and all these talks about Xbox opening their legs for them, like I, I could see that in a handheld capacity, but you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, Dick Wingbat, thank you for becoming a member. That's fantastic. That means you get the Discord. You should get straight in there because you will, I'm pretty sure, fit right in and have a good time. Uh, hey? Big up, big up. Uh, <laughs> what you... Sorry, right, okay, cool. I you were slowly dying. Uh, <laughs> nah, not yet. Um, Soon. Chris, <laughs> take the hand. Wow, well, if that naked twist is going to do it. Um, Chris, take the handheld question. Uh, I agree with Dodge. I'd, I'd sooner just have a shit art box that I can have by the TV, um, should I wish, and a separate handheld skew, which is, allows me to crack on with my library and stuff. Which, I mean, weirdly, I've got that set up at the minute with the ROG Ally. The only downside with the, the ROG Ally for me is like the battery life, but obviously there's a ROG Ally 2 coming out, or rumoured to be. Uh, I think it was the MD of uh a asus um india i think uh, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago said that there was a second in the works i think if you look at the msi claw or whatever it's got better battery life and things like that um so i think if they can get the power up a little bit um i think the rumor to have like a much nicer armory crate front end you know game and front end um and yeah just slap a bigger battery in and I'll be happy mm -hmm. to purchase that. And my current rog ally will probably go to the Broheim on the uh, in the chat or whatever for him to have a bit of handheld oh, fun. I thought he was talking about me. So <laughs> sorry, mate. You go to fifty nine sometimes. <laughs> oh, so I um I just wanted to say, hey, so just quickly on the console thing, like I don't think Microsoft get enough love for the Series S. Because, you you know, I'm not saying that they predicted the pandemic, but it sort of lucked out that the pan no one was working, you know, and they had a cheap entry point into the next generation. But for that, I still think that fucked them. Because it, it, if there was just a Series X, it was priced fairly against the competition, the world's most powerfulest console, you know, having that you know that extra fucking thing where it was like well what one do we want i know there was the articles coming out gap back and you know mothers were getting confused between x and s but i think they need to just i said it in discord the other night this generation coming up one box and go this is it like and, and hopefully start the generation early but so you, that's don't, what think I want. They should, yeah, that's you the... don't think they should pursue the cheap option no i don't because I, it, it look at this way asa I, obviously, we don't see. I haven't seen too many metrics on it, yeah. But I don't really report on them anyway. Yeah, I guess we'll know when the next generation comes around because if there is no fucking cheap option, 
that'll tell you enough that he didn't do what they wanted. Do you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is it does also scupper. You know, you got you want full focus on your product, yeah? If you're launching that product alongside another product, then all of a sudden people are looking like this, yeah? Sony come to market. This is what they should have done. Come to market, if they're going to do it, with a digital and a disk drive. Sony didn't need a fucking low-end, uh, a low-powered <clears throat> um, system. Yeah? Because Sony are ruthless. Like, they'll go, no, this is what you're getting. And they sell. The, the proof was there in the pandemic. People were still spending four and a half hundred quid a console, you know? So I think they just need to go fucking all in, try and market it for fuck's sake, but just go all in and go 400, 450 pounds or whatever and have a handheld option as well, what, what sort of synced or something like that. Um, that's their best. That's their best shot at it, I personally think. Oh. I think they fucking... I, th I think the Series S outsold the Series X by quite a margin in terms of um, like the one that's just gone. So they might be way worse off right now if they didn't have that entry point model. At the same time, I think the pandemic and stuff and the, the way that hardware has increased in price, I think has utterly fucked them over with that console in, like, in a bad way that we don't get to see because they don't report on these numbers. But um, no. If you think that like the the PlayStation Five and the Series X had to have price increases because they the margins were not good enough to to allow for the increase in components and stuff, there was no margin on the Series S by comparison. So I think that one actually probably hurt Microsoft more literally, and that they probably were selling that at a loss through those busy times. But I, like, but but on that point, like even I can well believe that the Series S did outperform the Series X. But what they effectively done Xbox by coming in with two SKUs was basically going, I will be your side bitch. You know, you can go and buy the higher powered, you know, PlayStation. We've got a more powerful box here, but, you know, we've got this thing here if you want it. And what you found was people were doing that. They were buying both systems. They were going, I've only got to pay 200 or 250 pound and I've got an Xbox. And what you're doing is you're devaluing your product. Even though they've got the best console there, the fact that it didn't outsell their lesser, yeah, means that, that that just shows how the industry see Xbox as a second option. You know what I mean? I get where you're coming from, but I'm to... not sure that that would have changed. We'll see what they no, do next well, time. But... We'll have to wait, because if they want to be... if they want, like, So much of riding on Call of Duty right now, it's a fucking joke, because like Chris obviously said, it, they'll throw it in Game Pass. Even if they don't throw it in Game Pass, they'll have to go heavy on the marketing for Xbox and Call of Duty. Um... A lot, a lot's riding on it with needle moving. Do you know what I mean? But maybe they're just happy where they are, but I don't think they are. I feel said about growth and everything. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. who knows? So, I don't care about the handheld thing myself. Um, yeah, sorry. If the next gen console is going to be a dockable handheld, personally, for me, like, handheld is a big deal, right? And Microsoft and the console space is, is not going well for them. So, I can understand there's a fair chance they really want to push handheld and try and get a new audience with it. For me, that would just be a cost I didn't need because I'd be paying for a screen that I didn't want to use for my console. So I hope it's not the only option, a dockable handheld, because um, I'd be either either paying a lot or compromising elsewhere in features that matter more to me. They, they, That's my answer they benefit from They'd benefit from an handheld as well, though, being like Microsoft with software. They mm -hmm. can just bake it all into the system, you know. Um, I think it's a really viable option for them. I hope they do it. I reckon so, but this was um, if they had, like, if their only model yeah. was a dockable handheld. No, 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 I'll get it totally. But I, um, we, we all sort of squashed that anyway, didn't we? We don't want dockable handhelds. No, that was, the, that was my answer just then. So. No, I know, I know. But I was just saying, <laughs> alongside that, I was just cutting in going for Microsoft, pushing the oh, handheld I market. I the question, Taj. Fucking hell. Well, pushing, so the, pushing the handheld is good for Microsoft. It makes sense because they can fucking bake windows into fucking handhelds. Anyway. So basically, Taj is, is saying your answer means nothing to him. I haven't. He said is. That. He is, it? and that's fair. Well, it shouldn't. It shouldn't mean very nine much episodes, at all. To be fair, nine episodes in, and you're shit stirring already. <laughs> Gamble, Let's Gamble, have, Gamble, oh Gamble, no! Gamble, got the next Gamble, question. Gamble, question. We're fucking tea and coffee again. Did we answer yeah, this last so, time? Like every time, every time. So my answer is coffee. Have you? Have you either of you had? Oh, you had a coffee going into this. What about you, Chris? Uh, I had 
Coke, which is just cold coffee, really. <laughs> but I um I yeah, but I, just, I always have a cup all of the tea. caffeine of coffee in it, and it's dark coloured. So. I always yeah. have a cup of tea in a calf. If you're going into a calf, you got to have yeah. a cup of tea. I mean, I do, I do have a cup of tea in my life, but obviously. Mm. <laughs> I can't function. I can't function it in the morning if I don't wake up and have coffee instantly. And I will have numerous cups of coffee throughout the day. Flat and Gamzy, we talked about we talked about Final Fantasy a bit earlier on, so I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. I'll talk about it more in the days to come, but we shall see. Um next question is from Eradication. As a community, how are we going to support Darge through the process of him installing the next uh, the <laughs> Fallout London mod? We'd be all right. I mean, we spoke we spoke about this like a year ago with the retard. It's just like yeah. beyond that when uh, he's gonna be balls deep in that. We'd be all right. I um we do a, I, I reckon I'll be all right. I'll be all right with it. I reckon you are. I don't get I, many tech support questions from Dodge. Mate. Right? Nah, I'm all right. I'm right not like it. yeah, I'm not like episode thirteen saying like the old net code in Halo Infinite's all right at the minute, even when he's watching some of the worst gameplay I've ever seen. But you know, I uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be all right. I've I've, I've fuck, you know, I said that's a rabbit hole for me, Nexus mods. I've been on there, I've I've like I've had a look, I've browsed, you know what I mean? I've contemplated doing it, but then I know once I do it, like I spoke to Tony about this in the Discord. Once I do it, I will look to do it all the time. So I'm trying to uh, stay back, but Fallout London's a completely different issue. Mm -hmm. St. George's Day. Oh, yeah, let's do the next question, please. That's when it comes out. It comes out on St. George's Day. Oh, right, okay. Of April. <laughs> okay, cool. Ace thought he was just doing something. Ace thought I was doing St. George's Day. Yeah, ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Oh, this is for right. Which Dragon Ball games would you recommend to Dodge after he finishes the anime? Um, me. No, I wouldn't. It's yours. <laughs> That's yeah. one for chat. Chat. What's the best Dragon Ball game to play? The the one that came out, the Kakarot one that came out last year or whatever, is long. But if you're watching all the other stuff, you might enjoy that. The I rest of them think, are uh, all very similar. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd enjoy a game. It might turn me off the franchise altogether. Yeah, you might. We'll see. The, do you like fighting games in general? Uh, no, I'm, a lo like I'm a lover. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter, AC. You know this. <laughs> the fighters game was quite good. I don't good. want to get Tekken 8. Much, but... I really like Tekken 8. It looks really good, but I haven't got it yet. Dragon Ball Fighters is much better than Tekken 8. Tekken 8 is much prettier. But... Dragon Ball. Fight, anyway, yeah. I don't think we've got an answer for that one. Isla, you've probably played some. You can recommend one. Um, and please I present like a the million. next question. There are like a million. And an awful lot of them are exactly the same. And they've been telling the same story for an awful long time. But Gamsley, Dragonflight, question mark? Yes. Dragonflight. Fuck. So Dragonflight is the World of Warcraft current expansion I'm assuming he's talking about. I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm not sure. It'll take a little while. Um, Final Fantasy XIV is making me want to get back to Warcraft as well. But, you know, time is difficult to manage. So I played like three and I don't know. Yes. Next question, please. Gamzy, if you want to play it, I'll play that with you. I told you, I play everything. All the, it's just finding time for them all. Um, I like to read this name, so I'm going to. He's just getting slammed with questions for Dodge. We we can we can leave. Asa we can. This is fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. Has a question for Dodge. If you do the hockey CD, wait. If you do the hokey cokey, what leg do you put in first? <laughs> Red hot key, sorry, too much PC stuff. I uh, can confirm it is your left leg in and then your left leg middle, out. Middle leg in? Yeah, or your third leg. <laughs> depends, where, depends where you are when, you, when you're doing it. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Nate State Games has asked, do you think the Xbox handheld would be developed and built by the Surface team? You heard a rumour that Jason Ronald wasn't involved in the next-gen hardware development. So the latest I heard on that rumour was by Jez, who does have 
contacts at Microsoft that says, um, like previous Xboxes, it is a collaboration between Jason Ronald's team and the Surface team. They are both involved. I remember the Xbox One X was um, was Jason Ronald's, but had the this whole Surface team and I've forgotten the fella's name that, that did all the weird Hovis clocking of the chips and all that kind of stuff. Um, There's a collaboration between them, Nate. So I think we'll probably not pass that one around and go on to the next question. Unless either of you really has something you want to say on the Surface team, Jason Ronald's team, internal strife and conflict. Fuck who does it? Just make it good. That's that's my answer. Whoever they've got to get, 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 get whoever they've got to get. Peter Super Chat, it's just to let us know, you knobbers are funny. So there we go. That's what we want to be called knobbers. That's what we, what we're here for. Um, that was it. That was all the questions. And we've pretty much run up to where we need to do our actors anyway. So that is perfect. Thank you, everybody, for timing that so well, because it definitely wasn't down to me. That's Thank the end all. of the Arcadia Roundtable for today. Chris, mm -hmm. I still want to talk to you afterwards, but I know you want to play your Dragon's Dogma too. Tell You're people <laughs> you are not in trouble. We've got, we've got things cooking that are important. <laughs> things things be cooking. Um. Tell people, where can they find you? What are you up to? Uh, usual place, Twitter. Obviously, I need, now with this like big contract being sorted, I'll uh, I'll uh, endeavour to be in Discord more. Um, yeah, Twitter, usual place. And I'm going to see if I can somehow resurrect Gregor or just crash on without him. Yeah, and leave his you don't need him. Behind. Um, and I might just kill the fella in, in the ox car just because... He just said this, it's not available to use at the minute, so I'll just stab him again. But I've got a pawn that keeps healing him. So this is very disappointing. Don't gone, stab people you want to kill. Throw them. Throw <laughs> everyone. Everyone and everything. Throw everyone. Actually, there's yeah. a waterfall right by, so I'll see if we can grab them and just lob them off there. So you can um, grab everyone. Yeah, just want to say thanks for everyone checking in again. All the questions. Obviously, the community is the best. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we. How we get on with Dragon's Dogma, and I will try and stay away from being pulled into Final Fantasy. With no, I mean, I'm gonna just get yeah. There's a gonna, crack show. I was just, just gonna there. play for like fifty minutes and turn it off. Uh, but that in that happen. fifty minutes, he'll spend three hundred and fifty quid on outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Dars, have you got anything to say to that? And tell people where they can find you and what you're up to. Which knows me better than anyone. Like he knows. Me going to play that Final Fantasy is fucking carnage. I, but to be fair, if it is all bunny ears, and that, I won't buy any of that madness. But uh, anyway, um, yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot, everyone who comes by and watches us. Um, I'd like it if you could hit the like button, please. It's the least you could do for us. And subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, and join the disc Discord. Like, this is good as well. This stuff is good. I'm in now and I'm funny. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, you'll just find me. Um, <laughs> Self proclaimed fun, fun master. I'm the fucking. Lisa, fun... Actually, while you're pointing at those t shirts, do you do a, a, a black sweatshirt, Asa, with the game in Arcadia? Probably. I, I will take. Asa takes special orders for me. <laughs> I mean, he won't, he won't give me. He won't give me the main like Kenny that I want yet, though. I like to retain the Bond villain look as a uh, dancer. Yeah. Bond villain, black jumper with the game in Arcadia logo on. I'll, I'll be if there's that. not one there already, it can be arranged, Chris. It can be arranged. Can I get that man Kenny that I want, though, Asa? <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just um, anyway, like, oh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, on my outro. So, yeah, probably... Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, obviously. Uh, Hell Divers, like I said in the Discord earlier, I feel like because they've raised the level cap and that, I kind of feel like I'm going to have to go into that because we've only sort of, well, I have personally, I've only had like two or three little fuck around sessions in it. I've not really had a good, good crack at it. So I feel like I could maybe jump in there, you know, towards the end of the week or something and have, a, have an evening on that. Um, I'm going to have to try and get on Skull Bones at some point with Chris. Um, this is done with so it. Was. Finished. You done I'm with still it, on. I'm, I'm doing me pieces of eight. I'm uh, just building my empire now, so I'll gladly sail around and just 
blow fuck out of stuff. Hey, um, uh, between here and the next episode, anyway, I will definitely have a little bit of Final Fantasy fourteen online, and I will let you all know about it because <laughs> uh, I'm fearful. But yeah, anyway, like I say, thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. Uh, thanks, Asa, for having me always, and thanks, Chris, for being here, mate. I'll see you all next yeah. week. So shady. The the huge pause on the mankini. This is genuine. The huge pause because I couldn't remember how many people have asked for that now. I was just going through the mass like <laughs> Dodge is not the first. This is a, a popular request. Um so I'm just thinking about do they actually have that as a listing available? Because requests are piling up for it for some reason. Yeah, I will also be on Discord constantly. As Pete says, I am a knobber. Um, but the Discord is good. So get there if you can. I'll be here on this channel tomorrow and thursday and at the weekend for the community games and back on next week for all of the podcasts so thank you everyone for coming by for hitting that like button and all the rest of it we will see you next time next time